Good morning, all. Hi, Kip. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Judy Martin. Hi, Barry and Margo. Hi, Kevin and Chris Vaughn. Hi, Robin Allen. Hi, Judy Hatch. Good morning. Hi, Joan Riggs and Sandy Sauerbeck. Good morning. Larry and Carolyn Thomas are with us. Good morning to you. Hi, Joanne Butters. Good to see you. Margo, I hope you're feeling okay. Lots of us are working our way through the vaccination cycles. I know Margo was able to get her first. And uh, I had uh, I had very, very few side effects on mine. A little bit of a sore arm, a little bit, a little bit of a headache, but some Motrin helped with that. And Nancy, you're two days. Two days of golf, right? No driving, but uh, were you able to, to hit any irons? I hope your shoulder's feeling good. Mine's feeling pretty good. I have uh, one more physical therapy on Thursday, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to just try it on my own for a while. So my shoulder is is uh, they got almost full range of motion back. A little bit a little bit missing when I reach behind my back, but. But it's getting stronger, so we're just going to let it go for a little bit, see what happens. I get 25 physical therapy visits a year under the health plan. And I'm up, I think I got 19 after on Thursday, so I wanted to keep a few just in case it didn't work out. So, but uh, it's working out well. Hi, Don Jones. Almost missed you there. Hi, Ken Woods. Judy Sutherland, Scott Johnson, Linda Clark is with us. Good morning. Hi, Joy and Steve Yambor. Hi, Norma Bentley. And my Aunt Mary, good morning to you. Hi, Sherry Keys. Mose and Marcia Noland are with us. So good to see you today, too. <laughs> good. Good for you, Nancy. All right. Well, welcome to Wednesday. It's the March 24th, and um, this kind of a mixed weather day for us here in, in uh, the Detroit metro region. A uh, little bit of rain earlier. Now the sky's blue, and there's supposed to be maybe, maybe some rain later on this afternoon, but definitely, but not a definite. So we're our, uh, we're hoping. Be nice to have another nice day. I know spring's coming because uh, the lawn, I, not a, I don't have a lawn service. I cut my own lawn, but I do have a, a service that comes and, um, you know, puts puts down fertilizer and so forth. So they're coming today. So I know it's got to be there. I, and I de-winterized the sprinkler system and ran that for a little bit. So that works out well. Cappy likes that. He likes the fact that these things that uh, spray water come popping out, uh, popping out of the ground occasionally, and uh, he always enjoys that. Hi, Joe Lynn Ross. All right, so that's where we are. And uh, Thursday, Friday are supposed to be kind of bad. It's got rain coming, but then I think that we've got a good weekend. So uh, as far as news goes, we've got um, tonight is our uh, Bible study, and we're in our Lenten Bible study. We've got tonight and then during Holy Week, and uh, then we'll take a little bit of a break. But uh, we're going to talk about uh, the atonement tonight, and uh, which means that we also have a lot of opportunity for discussion. So um, invite everybody to join us on that Zoom call. Uh, and um, and if, uh, you, if you don't know how to uh, get that, that goes out uh, via our constant contact, but Carrie Van can get that to you. So just let us know if uh, you'd like to participate 
We do push it to Facebook too, but that's not as interactive as being on the Zoom call itself. And I think at this point in the um, at this point in the in the pandemic, um, Zoom has become so ubiquitous that either either you know how to use Zoom, or you're probably never going to <laughs> use Zoom at this point. So hi, Amy Bowerman. Hi, Gene Hartwig. So that's tonight at 7 p.m. And uh, that's uh, that's what we have on on tap. We're going to go over to our daily readings here, March 24th, and. Uh, We've got, uh, we always start off with a psalm, and today's psalm is Psalm 5. So I'm going to take my morning beverage sip. Drinking a Kona blend of coffee today from Hawaii. I don't think it has too much Kona in it. I think the emphasis on, is on the blend. All right, our morning psalm, Psalm 5. Let's listen for the word of the Lord today. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil will not sojourn with you. The boastful will not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down toward your holy temple in awe of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction. Their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God. Let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them, so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. May God add his blessing to this reading. Of his holy word. And we move on to our uh, second Old Testament reading, and usually it's a prophetic one, and it is today. It's from Jeremiah, continuing on with chapter 25, verses 30 through 38. And um, so uh, when we read prophetic literature, again, the biggest question we should be asking ourselves as we read through okay, who's talking? at this point, because we can hear different voices. Um, we hear the voice of God, and we said, thus says the Lord, right? That's directly coming from God. Then we have, um, the, then we have the, the prophet himself um, putting in his two cents, um, usually observations about what he sees about the current situation. The Lord is usually speaking um, in one of two ways. Um, the first one is uh, the charges against uh, usually the nation of Israel, what they're doing wrong. And then also the oracle, which will be, this is what I'm going to do. Um, and then the third, so those, so we hear, can hear God talking, right? And then we can hear uh, the prophet talking. That's the second way. The third way is what God is telling Jeremiah or any prophet to say. So uh, there's three different voices that we need to identify. So yesterday we heard about um, how God was pronounced the judgment against Judah and how they were going to do that and the fact that he was going to bring down armies from the north and that they were going to utterly destroy um, and that they were going to pluck people out and take them away, which this is, of course, exactly what happened. Um, and uh, the interesting thing was, is it talked about King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, who was the Babylonian king, and how God was using him. He called him my servant. Um, but not, it wasn't a, he's not a person of God, uh, but how God was able to, God raised him up to pronounce and to carry out a judgment against the nation. And then later on in the reading yesterday, we heard about how uh, he would then tear him down 
and then allow the righteous remnant to return after 70 years. So here we go. Uh, and uh, this is uh, chapter 25, verses 30 through 38. Let's see if we can hear who's speaking here. You, therefore, shall prophesy against them all these words and say to them, I'm going to stop for a second here. So this is God telling Jeremiah, you go tell them this. This is what you tell them. The Lord will roar from on high and his holy habitation utter his voice. He will roar mightily against his fold and shout like those who tread grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. The clamor will resound to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has an indictment against the nations. He is entering into judgment with all flesh, and the guilty he will put to the sword, says the Lord. Thus, says the Lord of hosts, that's God. See, disaster is spreading from nation to nation, and a great tempest is stirring from the furthest parts of the earth. Those slain by the Lord on that day shall extend from one end of the earth to the other. They shall not be lamented or gathered or buried. They shall become dung on the surface of the ground. Wail, you shepherds, and cry out. Roll in ashes, you lords of the flock, for the days of your slaughter has come, and your dispersions, and you shall fall um, like a choice vessel. Fight shall fail the shepherds and there shall be no escape for the lords of the flock. Hark the cry of the shepherds and the wail of the lords of the flock. For the Lord is despoiling their pasture, and the peaceful folds are devastated because of the fierce anger of the Lord. For a lion he has left his cover, for their land has become a waste, because of the cruel sword and because of his fierce anger. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. So uh, if you've been following along and you're with us most days and we've been through Jeremiah, you can see some of the difficulties in interpreting Jeremiah because it just constantly weaves in and out. We hear numerous times of God passing judgment and then what he's going to do and then a glimmer of hope and then he's right back into the judgment again. So um, it can become... It can become a little difficult uh, to follow sometimes. So here we are. This is this is continued judgment against the nations, not just one nation, but nations. All right, we'll move up into our New Testament, and we're in Paul's letter to the Romans, and uh, we're in chapter ten, verses fourteen through twenty-one. Let's see what Paul has to say today. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard? And how are they to uh, hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all have obeyed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? So faith comes from what is heard, and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. But I ask, have they not heard? Indeed they have, for their voice has gone out to all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. Again I ask, did Israel not understand? First Moses says, I will make you jealous of those who are not a nation. With a foolish nation I will make you angry. Then Isaiah is so bold to say, I have been found by those who do not seek me. I have shown myself to those who do not ask for me. But of Israel, he says, all day long I have held up my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. I'll give you a little hint about this. This is just chock full. Probably two thirds of what we just heard uh, is actually... Uh, contained in either um, Exodus or in the prophet Isaiah. So these are words that the Jewish people that are reading this letter would understand. And what again, what he's saying is, 
Um, don't rely on what was done before. Even the scriptures that are said that, that that's, not, that's not enough for salvation. It's through Christ that we get salvation. And it's not done through works, but it's done through faith. Um, so pulling back from that, you know, he continues to come and, and uh, concentrate on telling the Jewish people who are Christians, right, further clarification of his understanding of what's going on. So there must have been, in, in at least Paul's mind, the need to do this. Now, we're the beneficiaries of that because um, Romans is so long and so detailed that it really gives us the best indication of what the earliest church thought and believed um, and some of the problems that were going on in the earliest church. So, um, so this finishes up and it says, look, you know, God is punishing everybody, right? Um, but, be, but he is especially um, upset because he's got the Hebrew nation who are his people, right? He says, all day long, I've held my hands out to come, come to me. And they've been disobedient. They've been contrary. All right. So Paul always hoped. He believed in the salvation that comes through Christ and for all people. The Gentile nation is the other nation. Other nations. But he felt that um, that uh, ultimately that it was the appeal of Christ to the other nations and their acceptance which would lead to these hard blind Jewish people to come and believe in Christ. Okay, gospel reading. John, chapter 10, verses 1 through 18. So um, I'm just looking really quickly here, see if I can help us out. Okay. So we've been talking what Paul was saying about that. Now we're here going to hear uh, Jesus talking in John about um, how to gain uh, access into this kingdom of God that he talks about, kingdom of heaven. So here we go. This is uh, verses 1 through 18 of John chapter 10. And this is Jesus speaking. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by his name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep, all who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and who, and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care uh, for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. So ends this reading of the word of the Lord. All thanks be to God. It's pretty deep. 
we get uh, two I am sayings. Uh, the I am sayings uh, appear throughout John, John, Jesus telling people in uh, kind of analogies um, of uh, his purpose. And so here we have, um, I am the gate, right? So what you got to know um, is what we believe back then. Um, if ever anybody's ever been to Ireland, um, Meg and I went to Ireland on our, on our honeymoon. And um, we actually rented a car and drove around kind of drove around the, the outside of Ireland. And, and um, so we were in uh, Donegal, and, uh, which is on the coast. And, and there's, um, uh, you know, rocky fields. And the first thing you notice, is you come, you're driving, and then you come around a corner, and all of a sudden, <laughs> there's all these sheep there. I mean, there's just thousands of sheep, and they kind of run free. There's no fencing. And the one thing you notice is that um, the sheep uh, tend to have um, patterns of color that has been dyed into, usually on their shoulder, but it could appear anywhere. So like blues and reds, and I didn't understand this. And then one of the places that we stopped, uh, we stayed in bed and breakfast, and I asked the owner, and she told me that, um, that all of the sheep, sheep farming is a big thing, and they all run wild, uh, you know, to, to graze and everything. And then when they round them up, um, that everybody knows who their sheep is based upon, um, you know, the, the markings that have been dyed onto them. So, so also at the time of Christ is that the sheep pretty much were out foraging, but there was people that were responsible. And the shepherds, um, you know, they, a lot of times they, they live together, but they had different responsibilities for different sheep and everything. So in the midst of, of these wide open places, there would be um, like a V-shaped uh, sheep pen. And that there would then be a gate, right? And the sheep fold would be beyond that, a fenced area. So they could bring in all these sheep in order to keep them safe. So if a shepherd noticed that they were missing one and they went off, they would put their sheep into that sheepfold. But there could be other sheep from different flocks. But each sheep knew the voice of the shepherd, right? So they, they, he could go in there and call to them, and then just the ones that he had would come out. So this is what the analogy that Jesus is using, right? That they don't follow a stranger's voice, right? And the people that have come before me proclaiming that they knew God, they're strangers, right? Jesus tells this to the people. Very little dense. They don't get it, right? So he goes on and says, okay, well, um, on that gate, right? On that gate that allows the good sheep in and keeps other things out. Uh, and then he says, I am the good shepherd. I'm also the shepherd, right? And I'm the shepherd because I own these sheep, right? So I'll lay down my life. I'll fight for my sheep. But if I just, if somebody who's just hired and doesn't, you know, have anything to do with it, they see a wolf coming, they're going to be more afraid of the wolf than saving the sheep, and they'll, they're going to run away. But I'll never do that. I will lay down my life for you. And he says, right, there's going to be one flock and one shepherd. And then he also says, I have, right, I have many, many other sheep that belong, that do not belong to this fold, to you. So Jesus is proclaiming himself to be the savior of the world here, right? And I, I can lay down my life to protect it, and I will, and he does, right? But I can also take it back up again. So we're talking about the divine side of Christ. So pretty beautiful and pretty deep. And uh, let's see what we got here. Come back over here. What's been going on in the, I think I said hi to Amy Bowerman. If not, Amy Bowerman, there's Carrie. Carrie's got that. Oh, and Margo says, hey, you can use our app, our wonderful app, and you can sign up for that too. And you get the Zoom link in an email. Thank you. Melanie Fleischacker, happy birthday. Welcome. Happy birthday. Hi, Barbara Wolf. Okay. 
All right. So we have 27 folks. That's down a little bit. We, you know, we max out usually around 33, 34, somewhere in there. So we have some folks that have other things going on today. So, but that's okay. We have lots of people. We have about uh, two to three times as many people that come and watch it during the day. So, um, um, to those people who are joining us, uh, hello to you. It might not be good morning, but good afternoon or good evening. I hope your days have been good. So let's have a let's have a word of prayer as we get going today. Lord, we thank you for the day that's in front of us, and for those who are watching later, we thank you for the day that's been completed. We we just pray that you would be present with us. We thank you for the healings that we've seen amongst ourselves. We pray for those who are hurting, for those who need your support. We know that there's families who have uh, lost uh, loved ones and that uh, they feel lost. We just ask that you would give them comfort and uh, you would give them the hope of the resurrection. And Lord, uh, we thank you for the spring that's in front of us and the many, many things that we're seeing that are breaking out. Lord, be with us in this uh, time of Lent so that we might come to understand just how divine uh, this Christ event that we're about to witness in Easter is and how perfect it was and how much it means for us today as it does 2,000 years ago. So, uh, Lord, be with us. And, uh, Lord, if there's anybody here that is in need of prayer, just have them reach out. Lord, that's our job. We will pray to you. So that they will know and have the light of your son, Jesus Christ, in their lives. We ask all of this in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, all. All right. Love you all. And I'll either see you tonight, right? Or some of you. And if not, we will see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Thank you for being with us this morning. God bless. Bye-bye.